well, since we're all at home, just sheltering in place, not going anywhere, watching movies, then we'll just pass the time with a claustrophobic base under siege film, and let's take a look at Phase 4. Phase 4 is a very underrated, very weird film. It's the only dramatic film directed by Saul Bass, who is best known for designing the movie posters and opening credit sequences for the films of Alfred Hitchcock. The premise is pretty basic and on paper fairly simple. Following the bombardment of Earth by cosmic radiation, ants in the American Southwest have started becoming more organized and intelligent and have in turn been attacking potential sources of harm, including predators and now humans. Two scientists have come in a prefabricated habitat to investigate. One is Ernest D. Hubbs, played by Nigel Davenport, who is an entomologist, and James R. Lesko, who is played by Michael Murphy, who is a cryptologist. Their objective is to study the changes that the ants have undergone, set up a line of communication if possible, and if they cannot be persuaded to leave humanity alone, determine how to destroy them. The two scientists end up becoming joined by a civilian who escaped the ants' attacks, Kendra Eldridge, played by Lynn Frederick. From here, the story goes into a classic base under siege sci um, science fiction territory, as you've probably encountered if you've seen the original Thing from Another World, or even John Carpenter's version, or numerous episodes of Doctor Who, particularly under the second Doctor's tenure. The humans attempt to fend off the attacks of the ants, either and while trying to either communicate with them, as Lesko does, or trying to destroy them, as Hubs does. Being this is a science fiction film from the 1970s, the script has been flipped from how this would go in the 1950s. In the 1950s, the person communicating would be in the wrong, and the person trying to destroy the ants is in the right. Completely op opposite way here. It, Lesko was set up more or less kind of from the get-go as being the person who the audience is supposed to empathize with, and Hubs isn't meant to be perceived as being more and more unhinged. Now, what makes this film really work and just sing is the insanely impressive photography of the ants themselves. We have incredibly close 35 millimeter shots of the ants in this film, um, like tight close ups on individual ants themselves. And even more than impressive, the ants are directed. Uh, almost bizarrely well, getting the insects to act in a manner that is being recognizable as very un-ant-like, including laying corpses out in state, dragging a praying mantis off of a perch, and so on. It is an utterly invisible crime that this film never got a director's commentary prior to Saul Bass's passing, considering that laser discs were a thing in the early 90s, and he was still around during the early days of DVD. It's entirely possible that this could have happened, and it is a damn shame that it didn't. As it stands, I would describe Phase 4 as being actually a visual masterwork that I think has been greatly underappreciated. I mean, this is a film that was part of the KTMA episodes of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Not that it's bad at the level of Monster or Go-Go or anything like that. Um, quite to the contrary. I would also think that because like, the film suffers because at the time that we were showing movies like this on television, it would have been in a four by three smaller aspect ratio, and this is a film that shines even with the claustrophobic environments of the uh, actual, uh, of the uh, internal sets, that it shines in widescreen. And it inspires, I would say, to be a cerebral, more cerebral film on par with, say, 2001 A Space Odyssey. It doesn't achieve that goal, but it's still quite a visually extraordinary film nonetheless. Now, currently... The film is only available in a very bare-bones DVD and Blu-ray release, the one I got, which lacks much in terms of bonus features, um, doesn't have, and it doesn't have the film's originally shot ending, which was cut from the theatrical release, but was rediscovered not that long ago and had been screened a couple times with the film in its original context at the end at, by Al the Alamo Drafthouse. Reportedly, the original ending is available on the uh, release on... Apple on the Apple Store, and with some footage, and there was a comment which can be taken with a very big shovel full of salt on a YouTube video showing the um, original ending taken from a fan cam at Alamo Draft House. Draft House. That um, that a special edition release is going to come out with that ending on it as well, but no release date information is there and. With how things currently are, I don't know when that will be. That said, 
Um, I do recommend seeing this film at least once. It is a very interestingly shot film, and its flaws, I would say, are overcome by Saul Bass's tremendous visual eye and the incredibly impressive insect photography. Uh, I'll honestly, I hope well, when that release comes out, if it comes out, I will certainly pick it up. Actually, I would even say that this is a film, particularly if we get the original footage in a 4K, have that ending in a 4K remaster. I would say this is a film worth picking up in 4K, should that come to pass. Now, links to where you can get the film from Amazon will be in the show notes below. Buying anything through those links will help support the show. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.